great big old red cow. Well, what'll I do? Oh, you'd better blow the whistle. And then what? You'd better ring the bell. <laughs> a box of 45 shells and about three feet of dynamite fuse? Yes, sir. How much for this gun belt and holster? Oh, that ain't for sale. That belonged to my grandma. If I so that, she'd haunt me. She sure got the face for it. Oh, is that so? My grandma was the greatest woman sheriff this country ever had. Ain't you never heard of Oklahoma, Annie? A woman sheriff? That's a laugh. Did you ride side saddle? Listen, mister. My grandma could do anything a man sheriff could do, only better. But the bad men in these parts were so scared of her that they either plumb reformed or hung themselves by way of cooperating. That'll be three dollars, please. I want to buy a flat iron. Another one? What happened to the old one? Well, the handle fell off. You know, they don't stand up. Nice balance. Like to try it? Yeah, I think I'd better. Sure, don't want you to buy nothing you can't use. Is your husband's insurance paid up? Well, I better check that first. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> There. Looks worried already. Okay, let her flicker. Hold on. I'll take it. Just put it on my bill. How do we stand on my account, Judy? Oh, you're practically a cash customer. That two dollars you gave me last month pays you up to the first of the year. This year? No, ma'am, last year. How do you ever keep your books straight, Judy? Oh, I put my paid bills in one pile under P and my unpaid bills in another pile under U. I call it my P-U system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I want an alarm clock, one that'll wake my husband up. Uh, here's a nice heavy one. This one'll either wake him up or put him to sleep. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, I'm supposed to be at the bank in Eureka to see about renewing my loan. Well, uh, the bank will be closed before you ever get there. Oh, Mr. Potter always stays a few minutes after closing time. He'll let me in. Oh, shut the door when you go out, will you? Yeah. Thanks. Closing time, Sam. Bye, Mr. Jensen. Give my regards to your husband, Mr. Jones. I'll put the ledger on your desk, Mr. Potter. Thank you, Sam. See you in the morning. The bank's closed. The bank's closed.
do you want? What is this, a stick up? Kurt Walker. You've got a good memory. All right, let's have it. I'm afraid you're wasting your time. I don't think so. But the money's already in the safe. As it has a time lock on it, no one can open it before 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. That's what you think. You busy, Skip. I don't want you running around loose. This won't do you any good. Hurry up, Skip. Better get undercover while she blows. Sheriff isn't in. Well, where? Look! They don't get away. Stop that. Do you want to kill somebody? That's what I was aiming to do. What's going on here? Somebody just robbed the bank. Come on, we can still catch him. Well, hold it here. Hold it. Let's see what happened first. All right, Sheriff. So. Get a good look at them? You bet I did. One of them was Kurt Walker. Kurt Walker? Are you sure? Kurt Walker, come now. I don't imagine he'd come back to these parts. Well, it was him, all right. And I ought to know. It was right here in this bank that he killed old Sheriff Hardy. Maybe we can still catch him. Let's go. Well, just a minute, Miss Canova. We've got a sheriff here. He'll go after Walker. You mean you had a sheriff? From now on, Mr. Supervisor, it's all yours. I'm through. Well, you picked a fine time to resign. I think it's a pretty good time. I ain't got any hankering to be the bravest man in the cemetery. Here's your badge. Well, if you're also scared to death, I'll go after him. No, you don't. Now, Miss Judy, you know you owe me money, and I can't take any chances on you getting killed. Idea of the sign. You ain't figuring on going out of business, are you? No, at least why I hope not. Oh, you sure had a scare there for a minute. The bank getting robbed kind of tightened up money, so I can't renew my loan. Gotta raise some cash to pay it off. Oh, oh. oh I feel that. Come on, Lucy, you want a little snort of water? I bet you. Come on, wet your whistle over here. Sure you don't need nothing else, Miss Fling? No, I think that'll be all. Well, that's 2260. Well, everything's half price. That's uh, $11.30. Just put it on the bill. 
But, Miss Fling, this is a cash-raising sale. And just as soon as I raise some cash, Judy, I'll give it to you. I can't see. Where's the door? Wait, I'll help you. Over to the left. That's it. Turn a little bit. There you are. Thanks. Got to tell her about that stamp. What can I do for you, Miss Fudge? I want a hundred three cent stamps, Judy. Yeah. Uh, just a minute. You paying cash for this? Of course. Well, ain't no profit in stamps, but at least I'll get my money for them. One hundred threes, that's three dollars. <laughs> you advertised everything half price, didn't you? Here's a dollar and a half. Miss Fudge! Too late. I'll go ahead and ask her, ask her. It's your turn. I asked her last time. You did no such another. I asked her the last time and I can prove it. Ask me what? Didn't I ask you the last time if you would grub stake us? You... Well, I'll be diddly dad burn. Darn your hide anyhow. There you go, getting me to ask her again. You ain't hit no pay dirt yet? Oh, Judy, we're getting mighty close to it. I got a feeling in my bones it won't be more than a week or so. We're gonna hit it so doggone rich. All right, boys, what do you need? Well, now, let me see. We just need a, a couple of little things. Got everything you need? Oh, yeah. I don't believe there's any trinket we're gonna need, is there, Blinky? No, sir, with a stick like this, we got to hit it rich. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead, Blinky. Go ahead, now. Uh, take it easy now, Blinky. Take it easy now. So she's liable to bog down. I guess she's gonna hold together all right. <laughs> She'll be okay if you don't get a puncture. Oh, he won't puncture. <laughs> oh, by the way, you boys going through Eureka, you can save me trip. Why, sure, Judy. What can we do for you? Got to get this money to the bank before it closes. Tell Mr. Potter it's only $300, but it's all I got. I'll bring the other 300 just as soon as I can get it. Uh, all right, Judy. We'll tell him for you. And say another thing. You know, after we strike a rich, you won't have to worry about everything. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. Well, bye, Judy. Bye, Judy. Oh, Come on, you. Come on, Luther. <laughs> bye, Judy. <laughs> What you stopping here for? We got four miles yet to get to Eureka. Yeah, but Blinky, I'm hot on a fire off pistol, boy. Say, a good cold drink go good right now, wouldn't it? Maybe it would. Sure. But if we're going to get to Eureka before the bank closes, we got to keep going. Yeah, but we could go an awful lot faster if we had a good drink to cool off. Uh, maybe you're right. Hey. Let's flip a coin. Go ahead, flip her. Heads, we go for a drink. Bye. Oh. Well, it's heads. It sure is. <laughs> Come on, we go for that drink. <laughs>
Matt. What'll it be? Uh, Sasha Perella. What's that again? Uh, Sasha Perella. Uh, make a good and cold. Would you do that for us, sir? Uh, say it's a Perella. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Don't you get funny with me, you old buzzing all tiny inside out. Wait, 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 just a minute. He's not fooling you. That's a new drink. That's Perella Field. Ain't you ever heard of it? No, I ain't never heard of it. Oh, that's a shame. Well, all the good bartenders in the city are serving it. They ain't it, Blake, ain't it? Yeah, it's no worse. Oh, yeah. Don't tell me. <laughs> and what's it got in it? Well, oh, well, it, it's got a little bit of this. And then it's got just a smidgen of that. Then some more of this. Oh, it's a mighty fine drink. Of course, if you, if you can't, don't go enough to mix it first while we'll settle for something else. Sounds very interesting. Oh, it is. So I'm going to let you mix it. Well, uh, that'll just be dandy. I could... Oh, oh, oh. Well, of course, we could settle for something else. No, I want to see this drink. Oh. Come back here. I'll hold it right on my finger. I... Come on, mix it. Well, I guess what I was going to do, I was going to mix it. Well, now, let's see now. Oh, yes, we got to have some of this here. See, put that right in there. That, 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 that's enough of that. And uh, then, let's see. Oh, yeah, here, there. Just a smidgen of this, though. Just a smidgen. Look, look, that looks pretty in there. There, see, have some of that. Oh, there's what I want. That one right here. This is the one. Ain't that pretty? Uh, ooh, so cool. And <laughs> Well, you see, you don't put very much of this in. Just a dribble, see? Just a smidgen. But then we... Oh, there's a knife about that. But this, this is the thing right here. This is the thing that really makes the drink. I want you to watch this. You see? Now, you want to get a watch? Just how about this? Well, oh, women and children first. Oh. <laughs> And there you are. <laughs> Drink a drink and you, well, what, you think I'm crazy? I got a lot of unfinished business. Drink it! Wait a minute now, wait a minute. This stuff has to age for an hour or two. While it's aging, while we'll take a couple of beers. You don't get a thing till you drink it. <laughs> oh, oh. You got any word to send home? I ain't got no home. You won't need any after you drink it in. Oh. <laughs> 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 it ain't that good. Before you drop dead, I want two dollars. Two dollars, yeah. Two dollars. Then you better have the two dollars. Hey, just a minute. Do you mean to insinuate that we are paupers? Why, the idea. Bartenders will be bartenders, and that's all they'll ever be. Twenty dollars. <laughs> I'll have to get change of this. Hey. Who's there? It's Lou. It's all right. There's a couple of pigeons out here, and they're loaded. Be right back. Still in time to place your bets. All right, what do you see? Pick a lucky number. Get your money down, man. Still time to place a bet. All right, all bets down. And the winner? Number six, black. I just took it for 500 bucks right over there. You mean you won $500? That's right. Never been here before in my life. They always let you in the first time. It's a come on. <laughs> Give them whatever they want, bartender. What do you know about that? Three drinks, bartender. Three drinks, hey, Sure would be nice if you could double Judy's money. Then she could pay the bank the whole 600. 
Yeah, but do you suppose they do let you in the first time? Oh, I've heard gambling houses do sometimes. Of course, they make it up when you come back, though. Yeah, but you see, we could fool them. You see, we wouldn't come back. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> come on. Pick yourselves a lucky number, of boys. We're going to spin the little ivory ball. All right, sir. Tell you what it is. Ah, but $20 on number nine. Number nine. $20 yeah. on number nine it is, and this spin. Yeah. <laughs> you little rascal, I'm going to drop in there right where we want to. Number nine. <laughs> Out. It's your number nine. It's your number nine. Number nine. Number nine. And the winner, number 13, Black. Yeah. I could have sworn it was number nine. All right, boys, place your bets. The more you bet, the less you lose when you win. What do you say? Well, I'd be diddly dad burned if I didn't think it was number nine. See, let's, let's double up and then we can maybe break even, huh? All right. Yeah. Right here. There's $40 on number five. Number five. $40 on number five it is. All right. right. Go ahead, spin it. Tenova Trading Post. Judy speaking. This is Mr. Potter, Judy. You promised to have that money over here. Oh, Mr. Potter, you should have had it before now. I sent Blinky and Paydirt with it. Well, they didn't get here. They didn't? I bet I can guess what happened to them. Okay, Mr. Potter, I'll take care of it right away. Bye. Oh, well, look, it's empty. It's, oh, ain't it dark in there? All right, boys, if you're broke, move on. Well, now, just a minute. We ain't exactly broke. We got collateral. Come on, Blinky. Well. All right, men, place your bets. Still time to get your money down. Bet red or black, hot or even. Place your bets, men. Still time to get your money down. I was asking Haskell about some of that money we got out of the bank. I need some of it. What about it? Listen, that money is as hot as Walker here. It's going to take a little time to unload it. You can't do it around here, you know. What about this new sheriff? He's getting in this afternoon. I'm going over to Eureka to meet him. I can't understand you hiring a stranger for that job. That wasn't my idea. Judge Burns appointed him. Think he'll be okay? He'd better be okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll get Tullet in as deputy. Is this all we got? All but the burrow. All right, tell you what we'll do. We'll shoot the works on 26. 26. All bets down. A minute. What's going on under this table here? Well, uh, excuse me, lady. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just as I thought. You're a bunch of crooks. That's what you are. Did you see what they done, lady? Did... Ooh, ooh. So that's what you do with my money. You knew this place was crooked. Now, wait a minute. You wait a minute, you big crook. The money these boys is playing with was mine, and if you don't give it back, I'm... All right, get out of here, the three of you. Yes, Come on. Here. We ain't leaving here till you give us our money back. You darn tootin' we're not. You bet we ain't. Just a minute, lady. We don't want any trouble. Let go of me, you big baboon. Cap. Cap. Hey, hey, just a minute. You can't do it. Good luck. Ooh. And you knew I had to get that money to the bank, so what do you do? You go to a gambling house, a crooked gambling house. Not only that, you knew it was crooked, didn't you? Didn't you? 
Go ahead and say it, Judy. Whatever it is, it's too good for us. We're, we're just a couple of low-down rats. We're smaller than rats. We're mice. Well, that crooked outfit thinks I'm going to hold still while they take my money. They're crazy. Oh, uh, well, what are you figuring on doing, Judy? I ain't figuring. I'm going to do it. Hello, Ellie Mae. Get me the sheriff's office. Well, Sheriff, you just let me know if there's anything you want to fix this place up a little. Oh, thanks, Supervisor. I think I'll make out all right. I'll get straightened around as soon as I get the rest of my equipment unloaded. Well, if there's anything you need, you just say the word. I sure will. <laughs> Sheriff's office. Hello, Sheriff. This is Judy Canova. I got a complaint to make about a crooked gambling house over in Coffin Creek. Coffin Creek? What about it? There's just this about it. This Bequady fella that runs the place cheated two fellas out of $300 of my money, and I want you to get it back. Well, not so fast. What evidence have you got that they were cheated? Evidence? I saw them do it. Oh, is that so? Well, you're the sheriff, ain't you? You're supposed to do something about it. Oh, I can't, huh? Well, we'll see about that. That's uh, a lot of newfangled equipment you got there. Yes, I believe in modern methods. Can't use old-fashioned ideas to catch modern criminals. You know, Sheriff, there are a few things maybe I'd better explain to you. There are several prominent citizens in this county that we may have to do a little favor for from time to time. Yeah? Yeah, you know, sort of give and take. We do a little favor for them, they do a favor for us. Well, I'd be glad to do a favor for anyone anytime, if it's within the law. And that's why I call this special meeting of the women's volunteers. Something's got to be done about the crooks who run this county, and it looks like it's up to us to do it. I tell you, this county ain't a fitting place for decent folks to live no more. What with the bank robbing and the murdering and the such like going on, and that place over in Coffin Creek cheating the folks out of the hard-earned money. Judy's right. That gambling house is a disgrace to the community. It's taking the bread and butter out of the mouths of every one of us here. We all know our men folks go there and lose their money. I know that mine does. Practically every cent he gets his hands on goes to those thieving varmints. And your husband too, Mrs. Fudge. Just a moment, Mrs. Fling. You take care of your husband. I'll take care of mine. Why, my husband's every bit as good as your husband. Girls, girls, don't argue. This meeting going on. Very important. Now. To make matters worse, the political bosses have got themselves another crooked sheriff. One that'll do anything they tell him to do. And I say we ought to toss him out of office before he gets a chance to get started. You're right! Just a minute, girls! I make a motion that we appoint Judy as a committee of one to call on that crooked new sheriff and demand his resignation right now. I second the motion. Second the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Aye. Now, Judy, it's all up to you. Any decision you make, remember, we're right behind you. Thank you, girls. And you can all rest assured that that sheriff will hear from the women's volunteers first thing in the morning. You girls like to buy anything? I'm running a little bit. New sheriff around? He's inside. What's this? Sheriff's car. Sheriff's car? You mean he's gonna ride this instead of a horse? Reckon so. Too bad they didn't get the old goat a wheelchair. He'll need one after I curl his hair. If he's got any hair. Where'd you say he was? He's in there. Sheriff. He's very busy right now. I can hardly hear it. <laughs> Some sheriff. Hard of hearing too, huh? Hey, Sheriff! I hate to interrupt your bedtime stuff. Well, how do you do?
do? Did you want to see me? Sheriff, this is Judy Canova. Very glad to know you, ma'am. What was on your mind? I don't know. Whatever it was, it ain't there no more. The sheriff's a very busy man, Judy. Not too busy? What is it, Miss Canova? Well, I tell you, I, I'm right about this gambling business. He's as crooked as a dog's hind leg. It was my money, and he took it plumb away from him. And, well, you just got to do something about it. Well, now, wait a minute. What is it you're trying to tell me? She's trying to say that she thinks the gambling over at Coffin Creek's crooked, but I'm afraid she's a little excited. Oh, then they do have gambling over there. Well, occasionally the boys have a friendly little game. Somebody loses a few nickels. A few nickels, nothing. They took $300 of my money. Well, I'm very glad you told us. We look into it. Excuse me. Well, you're wasting your time, Sheriff. I know that place. There's nothing wrong there. Nevertheless, I feel that any citizen's complaint should be investigated. Say, maybe you should come along with us. With you? Oh, boy. Uh, Miss Canova, I think this way would be a little quicker. You won't need your horse. We'll go in my car. Well, then I'll send Penny home. When you go after a crook, you use this thing instead of a horse? This thing will do anything a horse will do. It won't run on oats. Hey, what's that contraption? Two-way radio. Two-way what deal? Radio. No matter where I am, I can speak into this and get an answer back. Oh, you mean like an echo, huh? Well, no, uh... Must be broke. Good afternoon. Welcome to Coffin Creek. How do you do? Nice weather we're having, don't you think? Oh, where have you been, Billy Boy? Billy Boy. Oh, where have you been? Charming Billy, I have been to seek a wife. She's the joy of my life. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Can she make a cherry pie, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can she? Make Welcome to the Coffin Creek Social Club. Charming uh, Billy. Would you mind? What can I do for you folks? We have some delicious sarsaparilla today. I'd like to see Mr. McCready, please. Oh, yes, sir. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Judy, I can't see anything wrong with this place. Well, it wasn't like this before. But there's something fishy here. Hello, folks. My name's McCready. What can I do for you? Dan Frazier, the new sheriff, Mr. Well, Kennedy. I'm glad to know you, Sheriff. You know Miss Canova here. I've never had the pleasure. You ain't got that bad a memory, have you? I was here yesterday. That's funny. I don't seem to recall. Is this an official visit, Sheriff, or a social call? 
It's an official visit. Go ahead, Sheriff. Tell him why we're here. I've had a complaint about gambling here, Mr. McCready. Crooked gambling. Gambling? Well, that's ridiculous. Look around for yourself, Sheriff. I tell you, I was here yesterday. Well, there must be some mistake. I suppose you didn't take two friends of mine, Blinky and Paydirt, for 300 yesterday. Now I ask you, does this look like a place where gambling would be going on? Well, I've got to admit it doesn't. It was right here. They had gambling tables. Somebody must have tipped him off we were coming. Heavens to Betsy. Now who would tip me off? Heaven. I ain't a saying, but I got a pretty good idea. I tell you, I was standing right here. What's going on? Thanks, thanks. Oh, Mr. Sheriff, look, look, look. It's that uh, bandit. It's Kurt Walker. Take it easy. That's just one of the cowboys. Do you mind if I see for myself? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Sheriff. Too. One nice thing about a horse, his legs don't spin. Well, looks like we're gonna have to stay here until somebody finds us. It's all right with me, I reckon. Listen, you move over here, I'll get out and push. Now, when I tell you okay, you step on the gas, okay? Okay. No, 
know, Sheriff, if you'd have had a deputy in your office, we could have called him on your car radio. Well, I'm going to get a deputy just as soon as I find the right man. Does it have to be a man? <laughs> I never heard of a woman deputy, did you? Well, my old grandma was a pretty good sheriff, and folks around here say that I take after her. Now, with you and me working together... Well, now, I'm afraid I'd have to think that one over, Judy. You mean you might make me your deputy? Well, sure. You go out and capture Kurt Walker and bring him in and you get the job. Hot diggledy day. I'll do it. I will. You wait and see. Kurt Walker was seen in the neighborhood. He was? Yes, sir. And you better lock up tight, too, in case he decides to pay you a visit. I'd like to see him try to get in here. Well, we just hope we'd warn you. Don't worry. If that Kurt Walker tries to get in this door, he'll have to crawl through a rat hole, the rat. <laughs> well, you be careful now, Judy. Yeah, you do, you do that, Judy. I will. Don't worry, boys. Goodbye, Judy. Bye. Bye. Thanks, anyway. You're as welcome as a flower as you may.
close that window. This is a nice three-quart size solid enamel, solid steel. Oh, it's just a one. Yeah. Listen, I, I tell you what, I just got a new shipment of corsets in. I got one that'll look fine on you. You know, they're awful good for the figure. You got a figure, ain't you? Oh, sure, everybody's got a figure. Well, even I got one. You want to bet? No, I... Give me some 45 shells. Some 45 shells? Yeah. Oh, look, I'll take a little peek. Here's some 38s. Would they do? This gun uses 45s. Oh, and you're all out, huh? Yeah, I'm all out. That's why I want some. Well, uh, I guess if you're all out, then you, you really need some. You haven't got any? Not even one? Not even one. That's all I want to know. Hey, what are you doing? Let go, let go! Sure did, and it sounded like it come from Judy's place. Come on, come on, come on, come on, she can be still before we get back here. Come on, come on, Luther, get your high, come on. Hurry up, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Put your little patty cakes out there, you ornery varmint, you. This store is sure a mess, but I reckon it was worth it. You, you sure lie, Judy. And you done a mighty good job, too. Listen, tell the sheriff I'll be down first thing in the morning to see him. It's gonna take me all night to get this place cleaned up. All right, I'll tell him. Come on, get up there, you cur. Get on up there. Oh, now, come on, get going, you. Take good care of him, boys. Oh, don't you worry, none, Judy. He'll be as safe as a babe in his mouth arm. He's your whip. Go on, you. Come on, right here. Good night, Judy. Good night, Judy. Get on there. I'd like you to meet Jim Teller. Glad to know you, Jim. How'd he do? You'll be needing a deputy, so I thought I'd bring Jim here around to see you. I can't think of anybody I'd recommend more highly for the job. Jim's reliable, and he knows this country like the palm of his hand. Sounds like he's pretty well qualified. You can take my word for it that he is. Now, uh, if you're satisfied... Well, uh, I'll tell you what you do. You come around tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll talk about Hey, Sheriff, it. they caught Kurt Walker. They're bringing him in now. That weren't easy. There you are, standing up behind the boulder. A gun ablazing at us in both hands. Uh, two more guns on his hip, but we snuck up on him and overpowered him. Pretty tough, huh? Oh, 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 okay. Pretty tough guy. Oh, oh, yeah, but he doesn't get hey, stuck with me. They got, they got Kirk Walker there. That's him, all right. Oh, hi, Sheriff. Well, here's your man right here. Good work, boys. Where'd you get him? What happened? Well, it took quite a bit of doing. Yes, yeah, sir, it wasn't easy. Except for us, of course. And there he was, standing up behind that big boulder, a gun in each hand, a blazing away at us. And I snuck up on him. Well, you did know such another. I snuck up on him. We both snuck up on him. Well, yeah. <laughs> Me from the right and Peter here from the left. Yeah. And there they was, bullets a-whizzing around their heads and a-spattering all around us. But did we let that stop us? Oh, no, sir. Well, however you did it, it was a good night's work. Yeah, yeah, nice work, boys. Town owes you a debt of gratitude. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're anything, Sheriff, to get the warmth like him. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> no, sir. Easy to be. Be. Right. Here, How did you say that happened again? Uh, what'd you say? How did it happen? Well, Peter, tell them. Well, uh, I mean, well, there he was, that ornery critter, a standing up back of that big boulder, a gun a blazing in his hand. Two guns. That's what I said. Two guns a blazing in his hand. I says to myself, says I, Peter, yonder's a critter that is a menace to humanity. We both says to ourselves. You are taking your life in your own hands, I says to myself. We both says to ourselves. But. There is a sticker, a critter that we have got to fetch in alive. So... Listen, men, oh, we're arranging a celebration down at the old cafe. What about it? Let's show them how we treat heroes, huh? Come on, come oh, on! Oh, no, 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 Neighbors and fellow townsfolk, this is indeed a great day for our fair community, a day that will long be remembered by all of us. As mayor of Eureka, I have been asked to officiate in, uh, uh, to officiate in, uh, uh, yeah. to officiate at this occasion to honor two of our well-known and beloved citizens, whose valiant deed you all well know. What's going on? Haven't you heard? Blinky and Fader caught Walker last night. Hey, what? All a service far beyond repayment with meager words of praise. Far beyond any service we could hope to render for our fair community.
And so, with selfless disregard for life or safety, these two men have brought about the apprehension of a lawless creature, one who has long preyed upon the society of honest men. And so, it is with gratitude in our hearts that we gather here. We didn't mean to do what we've done, honest. That's right, Judy. You see, the town folks had the idea that we, we captured Curtin. We just idea. didn't want... Well, we didn't want to tell them any difference. That's see. right, Judy. Now, what's yeah. going on here? Uh, oh, Blinky. Kill him, pay dirt. Well? Uh, there he was, standing up behind that big boulder. Guns a blazing. Um, I mean, it, oh, shucks. We didn't capture him, Sheriff. Judy did. Judy? Yeah. Yeah, Judy captured him. And so it is with deep pride on this great and glorious occasion that I introduce these two men, our honored guests. Just a moment, just a moment, gentlemen. Come back up here. Come back up here. <laughs> Your modesty is admirable, but you're not getting away with it that easily. Come right here. Well, Judy, all I can say is it was a good job, and I owe you a vote of thanks. Reckon you owe me a badge, too. Badge? Why, Judy, I was only kidding. You didn't think I meant that... Oh, gosh, Mr. Sheriff, I only know what you told me. You said if I caught that fella that you'd make me a deputy sheriff, and I caught him fair and square. But Judy, this isn't any job for a girl. Why, it's tough and dangerous. Well, either you're a man of your word or you ain't. If you ain't, let's just forget the whole thing. Well, now, wait a minute, Judy. I, I know I promised you, but... Do you think you can handle the job? I know I can. All right, it's yours. Oh, thanks, Mr. Dan. I'll make you the goddarnest deputy sheriff you ever had. Uh, just remember, you've got to handle this job just the way a man would handle it. Yes, sir. And so, it is a privilege and pleasure on behalf of your friends and neighbors to present to you this small token of our esteem. Bring them in. Bring them in. That's it. Oh, <laughs> there you are. Oh, you be the prettiest thing you ever set eye on. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, well, well, thank, thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to call Martin Luther. <laughs> Martin, 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 Martin. What about Kurt? First, we've got to get you in as deputy. Then we'll take care of Kurt. Come on. I swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the laws of this state, and to perform to the best of my ability the office of Deputy Sheriff. What's going on here? Just swearing in my new deputy. What is this, some kind of a joke? No, it ain't no joke. See the badge? Look here, young fellow, you're taking a lot on yourself. I'm the supervisor here, and I expect cooperation. Well, the citizens of this county will get my cooperation, Mr. Supervisor, and the cooperation of anyone attached to this office. Now, I'm here to do a job, and if I know the law, the sheriff of this county has the privilege of selecting his own deputies. Now, that's the law, isn't it? Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. You promised last I night... I didn't promise you any such... Jim. No offense, Dan. You're absolutely right about the law. It's just that I thought Jim here was the right man for the job. That's all. I'm sorry, but I had a previous commitment. Well, sure, Dan. You're the kind of a man we need around here. Come on, Jim. Good luck, deputy. Gosh, Mr. Dan, you sure made him eat crow, didn't you? I don't know about that, but as long as I'm sheriff, no one's going to tell me how to run this office. Oh, howdy, Miss Fling, Miss Fudge. We are here to see the sheriff. Well, he ain't in right now, but I'm his deputy. Anything I can do for you? His, his deputy. deputy? Yep, just sworn in this morning. Well, this has gone further than I thought. I'll say it has. It seems everybody in town has been taken in by those crooked politicians. Why don't you old hens give yourselves up? Well, perhaps we'd better put the situation before Judge Burns. I understand he's arriving today. Yes, and the sheriff's gone over to Cornwell to pick him up. And you'll hear from our women's volunteers later. Come, Carrie. Goodbye.
Yes, it looks like we finally got the right man in the sheriff's office, Dan. Capturing Kurt Walker certainly put your office off to a fine start. Well, thanks, Judge, but actually it was my deputy that did the capturing. But your office accomplished it. <laughs> that deputy must be an alert, courageous young fellow. Calling Sheriff Frazier! Calling Sheriff Frazier! Who's that? My, uh, deputy. A girl? Sheriff Frazier speaking. Don't tell me something's happened to our prisoner. Oh, no, Sheriff. He's okay. Don't have to worry about him. Well, then what is it? I was gonna surprise you by fixing up your office, but can't decide about the curtains. What color do you like, beige or green? Is that all you bothered me about? Well, not quite all. You see, the beige has red poppies in it, and the green has white magnolias. Which do you like the best? Such Tommy rot. Do you mean to tell me she's the one that captured Kurt Walker? Must have been an accident. It ought to be purple with everlasting flowers on it. Everlasting? You should live so long. There's a gunfight on the street. Three guys are trying to kill each other. Sheriff Frazier, calling Sheriff Frazier. For heaven's sakes, Dan, please come in.
read it. Yeah, who started it? Sure. I did. You, you did. did. Oh, yeah, not, not on purpose, mind you. You see, there was a gunfight going on down the street, and I tried to get you on the radio, and I couldn't, and, well, what was I going to do? Well, all I know is you should never have left your prisoner. That's all. You're not only an interior decorator, you're a pyromaniac as well, huh? There's no time to bring in politics, Your Honor. He's gone! Oh, of all the dumb... Dan, listen! Come back here, you stupid idiot! I might be stupid, but I ain't no idiot. You're no deputy sheriff, either. Round up all the men you can. Kirk Walker's escaped, and we're going after him. In view of what's happened here, I'm afraid we're going to have to make some changes. Well, it's about time. You mean get rid of the new sheriff? The sheriff had nothing to do with this, Your Honor. It was his responsibility. It tweren't not. It was my fault. Gee, I don't mind getting fired, but you haven't even given Dan a chance. Oh, be quiet, Judy. All right, he'll get a chance. You take care of the office, Judy. I'm going after Walker. Wait a minute, Dan. I'm sorry to have to say this, but because of what's happened... I'm fired, is that it? Nothing personal, you understand? Because there's a possible chance that you and your posse might get Kurt Walker, we're going to give you the opportunity. But if he's not back in that cell in 24 hours, we're going to demand your badge. Very well, Judge. Come on, Lottie. At least we've started house cleaning. Nobody here but me, and I'm closed up for the night. That's just dandy. I suppose I'd be presuming too much to expect to find a telephone around here. I don't know how big a presume you got, but there's a telephone inside that I never had no trouble in finding. Thanks. Just leave your nickel on the blotter. Hello? Get me the Coffin Creek Cafe in Coffin Creek. Hello. Mr. McCready? This is LaBelle Latour. Is uh, Kurt Walker there? No, he isn't here yet. I expect him pretty soon. Okay. I had a little tire trouble on the way over. Tell him I'll see him there later. Hey, uh, I think we can change that tire. You just unlock the spare and I'll go get some tools. Okay. Hello, get me the sheriff's office. I guess you boys better turn in. Well, Sheriff, any luck? No luck, Haskell. I think I know where your man is, Sheriff. I was riding through the hills about 12 miles west of town. You know, just the other side of Big Bear Rock, I saw a campfire. There were two men. I got up as close as I dared. Looked to me like Walker and his partner, so I came back here for help. Well, get the boys and round up all the available men and meet at Big Bear Rock, and I'll join you as soon as I get a fresh horse. Be with you in a minute. Yes, this is the sheriff. This is Judy. 
You've got to get over to Coffin Creek. Kurt Walker is... Look, Judy, you've caused me enough trouble already. Now, you better stick to running that store and let me handle this end. Oh, but, Dan, if you'll only listen to me, I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. Sorry, Judy. I'm in a hurry. Hello? Hello? I couldn't find no tools, but I called the garage. The man will be right over to fix the tire. Now you tell me. I've already got the spare off. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Well, he's coming right over. You make yourself at home. I got a few things to tend to. I'll be right back. Lucky thing for me, you're running into those two men over Big Bear Rock. You sure they didn't see you? I'm positive. Dan, Dan, you just gotta believe me. Kurt Walker's at Coffin Creek. Wait a minute. How can Kurt Walker be at Coffin Creek when he was seen tonight about 20 miles from here in the opposite direction? But I tell you, some woman phoned from my store. She's meeting Kurt Walker at the Coffin Creek Cafe. Well, what woman phoned him? Oh, I don't know. She had a flat... Uh, gee, I never told a lie in all my life. Honest engine. I'll just take a fast run over there in the car. Attaboy, Sheriff. You mean you're going to waste time to investigate a crazy notion? I am not crazy. Well, if he's not there, I can still get back in time to join the posse. Well, I'll ride over with you. Me too. No, Judy, you better stay here and hold down the fort. Oh, shucks. Well, Sheriff, now that we're alone, I guess we can talk man to man. Shoot! I've had you spotted for a pretty smart young fella. Kind that would like to go places. Well, naturally, I want to do my job as best I can, if that's what you mean. What I'm talking about is a lot bigger than your job. Yeah? I guess you've noticed that I have considerable influence around here. I could be a big help to you if you'd, uh, well... You'd play ball the way I see it. I don't think I quite get what you mean. I think you do. Well, if you're leading up to what I think you're leading up to, you're taking kind of a long chance, aren't you, Haskell? Propositioning a man you hardly know. I'm not taking any chance. If anything I've said here was to be repeated, I wouldn't even know what you're talking about. Around here, my word's better than yours. I see what you mean. What's your proposition? Well, in the first place, I have certain uh, connections. They may be a little outside the law, but they pay off pretty well if your department looks the other way. I see. Then this gambling setup over at Coffin Creek is one of those connections. Now you're getting smart. Well, assuming that we could work out a deal, uh, that I would play ball with you. Just, uh, where would I come in? Well, that's something we'll have to talk over with McCready and Kurt Walker. Is Kurt Walker in there now? That's right. Well, let's go in and talk to them. Dan, don't listen to him. Don't go in there. Hold it. You thought you'd pull a fast one, leave that microphone open. All right. Let's go in and meet the boys. for Eureka as fast as you can. Judy Canova's in the sheriff's office. Get her. Don't let her talk to anybody. Just get her. And get rid of the sheriff's car out front. You'll never make it, Haskell. Judy will have time to talk to someone. Talk to who? Everybody in town's out on the sheriff's posse. Your posse. Left. They had to put out the fire over at the church. Fire? 
Hey, Fags! What'd you say? What's the matter? What's the bell for? Men all out of town tonight. It's a job for the women's volunteers. Be right down. seen me one of my whole life. If my hands weren't tight, I'd give you a big hug. I'll have you untied in a jiffy. <laughs> you better go after him.
like the election was pretty near unanimous. And as your friend, and still mayor, <laughs> I would like to announce the new county supervisor. You're all familiar with his accomplishments as sheriff, so he needs no further introduction. My old friend, uh, uh, Dan Frazier. <laughs> Thanks, neighbors. What was accomplished by the sheriff's department was due mainly to the efforts of the deputy sheriff. And I'm proud to present it to you now as the new sheriff of Kirk County, Judy Canova. Hey, Judy, speak. Yeah, speak, Miss Speech. Go ahead, Judy. Go. Gosh, I ain't never made no speech before, but. I do want to thank you for this here badge and tell you that I'm going to do the best I can for you folks what give it to me. And I'm so excited, so doggone excited. I don't know just what to say. Except in to tell you how perfectly swell you have all made me feel here today. Come on, folks. Everybody join in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, 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 never